Now, Trump saying again today before entering the court, the trial is politically motivated. He called the trial, quote, unfair and accused the attorney general of being a, quote, political operative. Venu Varghese is a Wall Street criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor who joins us now. Uh, this is a, a remarkable day in court for sure. A very contentious moments between Trump and the judge. Trump seems frustrated, even angry at the proceedings today because this strikes at the heart of who he was, who he is as a businessman. And uh, the, the judge not too happy with his long-winded responses saying at one point, this is not a political rally. What do you make of the clashes between Trump and the judge today? Well, I think it's good theater, and I think Trump is trying to use the theater of this proceeding or trying to turn it into theater because it's my belief, looking at the court filings and the statements that have been made that he believes he's going to lose. So what he's going to do is try to extract as much political capital out of this proceeding as he can. The, the, the sad part for him is that the rulings so far have gone against him, and there are things that have been do been done by his lawyers that just fly in the face of logic, and not things that you'd want to do as a law as a lawyer, you know, to try to intentionally anger the judge when the judge is not only deciding legal issues but factual issues. Sounds to me like a kamikaze suicide mission, and there's no good that's going to come of this for uh, Mr. Trump and his team. And again, to reiterate for our viewers, this is a civil trial, not a criminal trial. So Trump uh, will not wind up behind bars uh, in this matter. Uh, he could face severe financial penalties. The prosecutor uh, seeking $250 million in damages, also trying to uh, remove the ability for him to do business in his uh, in his home state of New York, um, but the judge will be the one who decides what that punishment is, not a jury. So my question to you is, when you see these exchanges, these tense moments between Trump and the judge, does it make the Trump's case worse or, or better for him? Is he going to face more consequences because of his behavior today? Well, let me take. Uh, uh, a little aim at the first part of your statement that he's not going to end up in bars uh, as a result of this case. He could. If they find that he lied and that he perjured himself, that a statement that he's made now under oath and they can prove that the statement is false, he could end up in jail as a result of this case. So there's, this is, his testimony is a legal landmine. You know, I don't think there's any good that's going to come out of this for Mr. Trump. I think he could have invoked his right to remain silent. What that would mean in a civil case is that he then gets an adverse inference against him. What that means is that the judge, when he makes his final decision on the facts, will say the Mr. Trump's failure to testify, I will look at it as a negative that if he had testified, something negative would have come forward out of his testimony because all of this wrangling is not going to help him uh, on appeal either because some of the shots that they've taken which for example at his at this judge's law clerk to me just don't make any sense and the judge issued a very specific gag order that said hey i'm not making my order towards me I, you can say what you want about me, but don't say anything about my law clerk, about his legal secretary. They have filed uh, basically uh, motions in opposition to this um, exchange. When, he, when the judge speaks to his law clerk, he's allowed to do that. And so this is very strange to me. I mean, part of the problem here is that Trump has hired a bunch of lawyers who are not admitted to practice in New York. You've got to know the procedural rules, at least have people with you can advise you on the procedural rules. And while there is a New York firm there, it seems that his primary lawyers here, including this woman, um, his main lawyer, was also fined a million dollars with him in Florida in federal right. court. So I, they, don't, they don't seem to have a successful track record, and this just seems to be just aimed, as the judge said, to try to get some political capital, which may be the only thing he's got going for him. 
and uh, it may be worth it. Right. Uh, ultimately, if it helps what do you, win the What do you make of, we just have a few minutes here, of Trump's defense so far? He's kind of taking a hands-off approach, calling us a political witch hunt. Uh, he thinks the prosecutor, like in other cases, is out to get him and that, you know, he's staying, you know, distance from what his lawyers and accountants were doing. He didn't have much involvement, according to his defense. I, I, look, I think that's, that defense is a solid defense. I mean, why would you believe that somebody with such a large organization knew the day-to-day -day and was very involved in the day-to-day? -day? I mean, what do you have really against him? I mean, you have, okay, the inflation of, of real estate property or the, the prices of it, which is common in the real estate world of New York. I think he's got a good... Uh, there are things in his case which actually could work in his favor, but I believe that this stuff doesn't help. And what's going to happen on appeal after he loses is that the court is going, the appellate court is going to be so guided by how this proceeding went about that they're going to maybe not give this, the strictest scrutiny to otherwise potentially valid legal arguments. So I don't think that this is the right way to go about. And though I do think that that's a legitimate and viable defense on his part. And ultimately it's gonna be up to the judge who he is not clearly not happy with so far. Criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor Vinu Varghese, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time today, we appreciate it. So the big question in all of this, how will all of this impact the upcoming presidential election? Yes, it is still a year away, so a lot can change, but some new polls out right now show that the former president is leading among voters who were surveyed. It is important to note those taking part indicated concerns about the current president, President Biden's age and his handling of the economy. In fact, according to the New York Times Siena College poll, if the election was held tomorrow, Donald Trump would win five of the six most crucial crucial swing states. Trump is winning by small margins in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, and Pennsylvania. Now, these are all states President Biden won in 2020.